What up, folks? It's the Funk. I'm back. It is Sunday, October 27th, 2019. Got another show for you. Uh, I talked about. Gonna do my NFL picks. Talk some wrestling. Gonna talk World Series. And uh, some some regular stuff. I got just one email. Um, I'm, I'll double check one more time. But oh, last time I checked, I only got one email, which is fine. But um, I like to have at least a couple to talk more. Makes the show grow a little longer. So if you guys throw some emails at me, I appreciate it. Um, uh, wrestling, I'll talk about wrestling real quick. WWE is definitely losing me, um, slowly. Uh, NXT is the only thing keeping me attached to the WWE brand because they're, uh, Finn Balor going to, back to NXT was probably the smartest thing that's going to save NXT. And it's also going to save WWE because Finn Balor wrestling, I think he should have never left. Like he should have, I don't know. They brought him back, they brought him up too soon, did him too fast, and they got hurt. So I think they kind of fuck botched his whole you know, story to come up, but, you know, I, I think him turning on Gargano was awesome, I, that match will be phenomenal, I'm dying to see Finn Balor, I want to see Finn Balor, Ciampa, and Gargano in a triple threat match, that, I know, throw Adam Cole in there for the NXT title, Fatal 4 right? that match would be sensational, I would love to see that match, oh my god, um, Raw and SmackDown, just doing clown shows, bro, they're doing clown shows, it's wrestling to me right now, AEW is a little more grabbing my attention, uh, but it's still, I don't think it's up to, everyone's saying it's better than NXT. I'm slightly NXT favored a little bit more, but AD, AEW is putting on a decent show. I'm not taking anything away from them, but I'm just not fully on board with them yet. Yeah, but they're definitely pulling out some shit. I like what they're doing. Cody Rhodes and Jericho and you know, stuff, you know, the inner circle. They do want some stuff. It's intriguing. It's it's bringing you, it's bringing you, your attention to a little bit focus to them a little bit more, which is good. Jericho is smart, and the the, the people at AEW are smart are letting Jericho start a faction right away in AEW. Well, at least now that's TV. There's going to be on TV all the time. Smart. Very smart. Um, they kind of want to bring back the old school WCW, you know, factions, whatever. But, you know, they're trying to go not go that route so much as, like, WWE did. But, I don't know. I, I just think... AEW is definitely uh, bringing my attention a little bit more each week, but I'm still watching NXT. I'm, I'm just DVRing. We're on SmackDown now. I'm barely even watching. I'm just like, really skipping through them. They haven't been anything entertaining. Crown Jewel is going to be a joke. Um, I'm really just fed up with, with, with. They haven't done anything surprising to me. The whole Kane Velasquez, Brock Lesnar, dude. That's the, if they want to do that, go do that in MMA, dude. I don't. I don't want to see it. He cannot. He, he's not a good actor. He doesn't have a good presence. He doesn't talk. He's going to be the Spanish Brock Lesnar because he's not going to talk either. Rey Mysterio is going to be his mouthpiece or whatever. I don't know. All I know is that I could care less. Um, the Tyson Fury Braun Strowman match is the only one that kind of interests me a little bit because I, because Tyson Fury is a big dude. So I kind of want to see how that match is going to go. I don't think it's going to be something stupid is going to happen. It's like no one's going to really win. Be it's twelve k. I don't know what's going to be, but I know it's going to be. No one's going to get. There's going to be no clear cut winner. I think, but. Um, the Battle Royal, see who goes against AJ Styles that night. I could be anybody. You know who I think deserves it? Cesaro. But he's very underrated, Cesaro. And I, I, they fucked him up, man. You know, once Sheamus got hurt, they were kicking asses at the bar. They were attacking champions several times. Um, he, he, they need to put a belt on him. And if it's not heavyweight championship, it's got to give him a belt. He, the man deserves it. He's a good performer. He deserves a belt. He hasn't had enough title reigns, single titles reigns in my book. I don't know how many he's even had, if he's had even any. I know he hasn't had a heavyweight t- title reign. I don't know if he's intercontinental champion or United States champion once before, but I just think that Cesaro's way underrated and he doesn't get enough credit. Um, <clears throat> the World Series. The series is tied up 2-2. Two to two. When I first... Before the start, after the Yankees lost last week and whatever, and they started World Series on Monday or Tuesday, I've been kind of just in and out of it. Surprised that the Nationals won the first two games in Houston, but now they're back in National Park, and Houston just beat them the next two games. I'm nervous if I'm the Nationals, because now that they got momentum in your in your house, and if they win this game and go back to fucking Houston with up three games, it's over. There's no, there's no way in my mind, if Houston wins tonight, they're winning it back in Houston. They're winning six. But... If the Nationals can pull it out, they're winning it in seven. That's my prediction. So, we'll see what happens. Um, but otherwise, the World Series, like I said, once the Yankees were out, man, I was just like, all baseball it was like, just it just sucked the life out of me. And after watching the Giants lose, too. Uh, my picks this week are definitely not very favored in in, in my, you know, my particular team. So, uh, I'm definitely uh, not happy about that. But, 
I'm going with the lines and what I'm seeing. Uh, there's a lot of different lines. I don't know what you guys use. Um, there's ESPN line. There's there's several different ones. Um, I try to stick to ESPN line. It seems to be the most balanced one. Uh, some of these other ones are kind of, eh, you know. Um, that's about it. Uh, what else? Someone else wants to say I'm about wrestling. I'll do my picks and I'll do an e I'll do an email real quick. Um, week eight picks. I'm, I had to recalculate my record because I definitely screwed up doing the wins losses. I had to go back and watch all my other picks, so I screwed up one or two. So my actual record is fifty five and forty overall going into week eight. eight. My week eight picks are as follows: uh, Seahawks at the Falcons. The Falcons to me um, suck. Matt Ryan is. I don't know, Julio Jones is like, I, I, if anyone has him on fantasy, he is doing nothing. I have not heard his name once this year. Very little. Um, but I'm taking the Seahawks. Russell Wilson's the man, dude. He's having an MVP type season. Their defense is solid. I think they win. I think they go, they go in Atlanta and win. Chargers at the Bears. Bears have been very up and down. Phillip Rivers, man. Uh, he, 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 he seems like he plays better on the road to me than he does at home because he sucks at home, it seems like. I thought watching my home, he was losing. I think he's definitely better on the road, honestly. I think he's, I won't really want to see his career records home and away, because I think he's better on the road. So I'm taking the Chargers over the Bears. Um, next match with the Giants at the Lions. I don't know. The Giants, to me, are in, they're in football purgatory right now, because right now I want to love them, but I also want to, I want to hate them, because it's going to be learning curve with Daniel Jones. I know this. The defense is there. I'm just not too. I'm not too keen. I'm, I'm not a Pat Shermer guy, but like I said, he's he's made some wacky calls. But whatever. Like I said, he's. I, I, I just don't like him as the head coach. I really think they should find somebody else. That's just me. Um, I know a lot of people out there are like, oh, you know, you know, he's the coach. A lot of people are for Pat Shermer. Giant fans. A lot of giant fans don't like Pat Shermer. So and I'm on. My, I'm on the. I don't like Pat Shermer side. So I'm thinking the Lions at home. Matt Stafford, dude. As long as these guys, if he doesn't have carry on Johnson, I don't think it's going to matter because I think Marvin Jones is going to have a game today. If anyone has Marvin Jones in their fantasy, I think he's going to have a game today. Um, he's my surprise. Uh, I'll throw a surprise um, once in a while, surprise uh, fantasy player in there. I think he's going to have a monster week uh, in some of these games. Not all of them, just a couple here and there. Jets at the Jaguars. I don't know, man. The Jets are bad. Um... The Jaguars, Gardner Minshew's been playing pretty well. Their defense is solid. It depends on the weather, but I'm taking the Jags at home. Uh, the Jets haven't really done anything to me for me so far to pick them. Um, Bengals at the Rams. Bengals suck. The Rams at home all day. Um, Bucks versus the Titans at the Titans. Uh, the Titans have really been up and down with Mariota and Tannehill. I don't think they know who they want to be the quarterback right now or if they're just coming out the season all, you know, throwing these guys in and out. I don't know what they're doing, but I don't think the, I think the Bucks go in there. I think Jamison Winston has a game. There's another guy I think he should start today. I think he's going to light up their, their defense. Uh, they're missing a couple of guys on their um, sec, uh, one of their guys in their secondary, their safety, I think, from what I read on the, the Yahoo uh, websites earlier. Um, Eagles at the Bills. This is a tough matchup. The Eagles just got whooped up by the Cowboys, and the Bills are coming off a of bye week, I think. So, um, but the Bills, are, they're 5-1. and one. They're pretty good. I, I, I'm taking the Bills at home over the Eagles. I'm liking the Bills this week. I'm not really feeling the Eagles. They haven't, they haven't done anything much for me this year. Broncos at the Colts. Um, of course, until they play the Giants, I'm probably whip our ass, but that's beside the point. Uh, Broncos at the Colts. <clears throat> you know, there's one thing you haven't heard about this year, and it's Jacoby Brissett. I'll tell you right now. If you're playing, if you have him in your fantasy leagues, you should start him this week. If you have him, I think he's gonna have a monster game against the Broncos. Because the Broncos pass rush is is okay, but they have decent offensive linemen and Drew Brees can run and he can throw well on the run. So I'm taking the Colts at home over the Broncos. Like I said, if you had Jacoby Brissett, I would start him today. Um, Cardinals at the Saints. Drew Brees is back and Drew Brees is getting a win because he's home, dude. Pfft. End of story. Saints at home over the Cardinals. Uh, Panthers, 49ers. 49ers are hot, man. 49ers are, defense is very, very, very good. Um, kind of reminds me of the 2000 Ravens. Their defense is very fast, and very strong. Um, I'm thinking 49ers at home over the Panthers. I, I don't think they're. I think they're going to shut down McCaffrey. Um, I'm going to start the 49ers defense possibly. They're missing an offensive lineman as well, I do believe. Raiders at the Texans. Hmm. 
Texans have been up and down lately, but I think I, I like the matchup. I'm going to take the Raiders. Raiders over the Texans. Um, next matchup: Browns at the Patriots. Patriots. Um, Packers at the Chiefs tonight. Um, Mahomes is not playing, and I think Aaron Rodgers is finally starting to get a, after his five touchdown five touch, touchdown performance last week. I think he's starting to get uh, even without Devonta Adams, he's starting to feel this offense now. So I'm taking the Packers over the Chiefs. And in Monday Night Football, Dolphins at the Steelers. Um, Dolphins suck. I'm just taking the Steelers at home. No matter who the quarterback is, I, I don't. The Dolphins are terrible. So. Those are my picks for week eight. Hopefully, uh, right now I'm at 55 and 40, which is a pretty good record. Like I said, I didn't, you know, I didn't know how to calculate it. I had to go back a lot, watch a lot of stuff. So, but I'm gonna do my email now, Lawrence. So yeah, I talked to World Series, Larry. I think this is what I predicted before. If the Astros win tonight, going back up three two, they're winning in Game Six. But if the Nationals can pull out a win before they go back to Houston, Nationals in seven. That's my prediction. Astros win tonight, Astros in six, Nationals win tonight, Nationals in seven. That's my prediction. Otherwise, fuck baseball because the Yankees lost. <laughs> um, let me find my email here from, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Nick Lamastro writes, Jerry, I've been trying to send emails for a week, but they keep bouncing back. It said there was a problem with your ISP. Hoping this one goes through because I'm losing my patience as I am sure some of your other fans have. Here are some questions or comments for your show. Now that Bagatti is dead, who is the most wanted man on earth, do you think? Yeah, I just heard about that guy, man. I was just reading about it uh, earlier. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of dudes out there. I don't really know certain names, but they're all crazy. Islamic or Muslim or whatever. But um, I don't know, man. That, but I heard about him this morning. That's that's good. He's, he was a, one of the big bigger name dudes. Who doesn't like America? So him dead is definitely a good thing. <clears throat> As a former serviceman, I felt great joy and honor when we when the U.S. killed Bin Laden. If the calculated risk of the Obama administration allowed us for us to put a bullet in that scumbag, where were you when you learned the news? How did you celebrate? I forgot where it was. I was at work. I think it was at work when I heard, it, and everyone was like clapping and going apeshit, like, "Yeah, it's awesome! Fuck, fuck him! Yeah, you know, it was. It was really." A very, like, where was I working at? I don't remember. Where it was. I was in the post office, I think. Yeah, I think it was my... 2001 was 9-11. Uh, no, 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 was I still in the post office? Well, I don't know if I was still in the post office. But when Bin Laden got killed, I don't know where... I, I think I was still in the post office, I think. I just don't remember what year, what, what year it was. Um, no, but everyone was high five. Like, yeah, all USA chanting and stuff. It was cool. I went to a Halloween party last night, and all I can say is the women dressed like prostitutes, and I love it. <laughs> I was dressed as a premium sausage. Oh, man, I wish you could send me pictures, because that would have been great. Um, what are some costumes you've done in the past? Uh, I've been... I've really been to a Halloween party. They've dressed up since last year, but I was just dressed up as one of the things my daughter would like. The, the father of one of her cartoon characters she liked. After Vampirina. I forgot the, the, the dad's name, but uh, I dressed up. That's the last time I really dressed up. Uh, but before that, I dressed up as the Riddler. I had been... Uh, what else one year? Uh, I did dress up as um, Macho Man one year. Years ago. I think I was like in the early, mid-2000s I was, I think. Um, but that's it. I really haven't really dressed up, dressed up. In fact, I just put a mask on or something. I really haven't dressed up, dressed up. That's except to, from last year's Halloween party. Um, Ever go to a party... When these women walk around with their boobs hanging out, it's hard to not have a boner the entire time, literally. You know, these women like to dress, uh, Halloween's a sexy time in the year, of the year. At, ways to, at what age do people start telling you that you should have a talk show or be an entertainer? Nobody. <laughs> I just decided that I like to do it. <laughs> and people like hearing my opinions, so. Um, if I can offer some honest feedback. I think your show is good and you seem very honest, but you... But you, like anyone else, have strengths and weaknesses. Your strengths are are you are honest, witty, and you are ve very just true to yourself. Your audience believes you. Your weaknesses are your atrocious reader. Yes, I, I am a very not good, I'm not a good reader. I bet you had a hard time reading this email this far. <laughs> very funny, no. My recommendation is maybe print out the questions and reader, read them from a paper. They make, they, they make, you don't know how to spell, you, your, your grammar's terrible, dude. They make my, not seem. That's what you just on here. 
they make my, might not seem as choppy. I, as a viewer, have a hard time following when you mumble, mispronounce, and often omit words from an email. Yeah, I, I do sometimes mumble. I, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to get better with that. I'm slow, trying to slow down as much as possible. <clears throat> it's not easy, it's just the way I talk. If I had a better microphone, you'll also probably hear me better as well. So, sorry about that as well. As a former member of the service, you'd think I'd have no issue getting women, but that isn't the case, sadly. I've been on dates, but nothing sticks. What can you offer to help me find the one? And by the one, I don't mean a divorced mother or two that wears a shit ton of makeup and acts like she's in the military because she's dating a guy that was in the military. Those are a dime a dozen. Okay, let's play the last time game. Hey, man, you just got to find, you know, find someone that, you know, it's not easy to find dating nowadays. It's crazy, all the apps and all the shit and bars. It's You just got to find someone that you think that, that you're attracted to, they're attracted to you, and you can get along and be together. You know, you don't, actually, if you want to not be married, don't be married. Just stay together. But like I said, you get married nowadays is crazy. Tons of divorce now. It, the world's crazy. Like, if you get married, great. And if you don't, great. You know, you, whatever you're happy with. You know, if you don't ever want as long as you and that, you're with that person, no, that's not going to happen. As long as they don't want that. Because that's what happens a lot. A lot of people, like, get together and don't really want to get married. They get married too fast and then they get divorced. You know, it's like, I, I've seen it happen with a lot of, sometimes lots of people I've, I, you know, I've been to a ton of weddings, too, and half the people I went to weddings, I'm sort of, are divorced. I swear to God. I've been, like, in the early 2000s, a lot of my friends were getting married, and I got married in 2005. From, to the, like, the mid-2000s, like, a lot of my friends and, and family members got married. And a lot of them, from good friends, to cousins, to uncles, and aunts, and everything, everything in and between, half the marriages ended in divorce. Um, a good majority, maybe actually more than half, but you know that's what I'm saying. Like you know, just you got to find the right person you want to be with, and they're willing to be whatever you want to be with them. You know, it's it's tricky nowadays. Okay, let's play the last time game. You need to be honest. Last time you cried uh, last week when the Yankees lost. Uh, Why well, the Yankees lost? That's why I cried. Uh, ate meat. Let's see what did I have last night for dinner. I had fish last night. Um, what did you eat? Mom made some kind of. I think it was cod. That's pretty good. It wasn't too bad. She made it with the, the roasted potatoes, which I like, so it was good. Um, jerked off the other day. What did you think of? Porn. French kissed a woman. Yes, my wife. Got into an argument. Why? Oh, it's always stuff, you know. You get in arguments with people at work, you get in arguments with... I didn't get work, but I got upset at work. It wasn't really an argument. I just got upset. That's it. And I was just, like, very angry. But, you know, and I kind of took it out of my wife I got home, you know, when I got home, and I didn't mean to. So it's kind of, you know, I, I didn't, shouldn't have started the argument with her because I was still feeling at work. So I, you know, try to leave work at work and, you know, not mix work with home. Like, you know, it happens sometimes. You don't mean to, but, you know, it's going to happen, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I should have just thought about it, took a deep breath before I came in the house or whatever, you know, I was still kind of angry from it, you know, when I got home, and I kind of, you know, I'm off to D.C. for a military parade, have a great show, I'll tune in tonight. Thanks, Nick, some more emails, guys, send emails, questions, comments, or emails to jerrygmail2376 at yahoo.com or at gmail.com, I have two email accounts, and I check them religiously, so, Lawrence McKay is the only one to join me, my good buddy. Anything to ask, Larry? Got, uh, got you. Anyone want to call in? 845-825-1227. I'll take some phone calls. I only have one email today. But, um... That's about it. Uh, I want the Giants to win so bad today, but I don't know. Detroit's not bad. They could be better. They, they should be better than the record is, but I think they've had a lot of miscues. They got screwed on a freaking... Uh, a couple penalty calls when they played the Packers a couple a few weeks ago. So, like I said... I, they're, I think they're better than the record says they are, so I think they might beat the Giants. You know, if Daniel Jones is still learning, it depends on if he can read their def pick up their defense a little bit better. Sometimes you, you know, like Sam Donald saw, he saw ghosts. He saw it looked like there's more guys out there than there where there was, and um, that's how New, New England's defense is so good. They know how to freaking throw a lot of different looks at you and make you see more than what you're seeing and overthinking. It's quarterback all in the quarterback's head, and then he doesn't know what play to call. So. uh <clears throat> that's where the defense, the New England's defense is like ridiculously good. And um, I said, right, they could have one of the best defenses 
in the history of, of sports because they are doing unbelievable things. Shutting out teams. I think three shutouts this year. Two or three shutouts. You know, that doesn't happen too often. <clears throat> you shut out another team, that's... And especially in the NFL, that is that is tough. It's not easy to do. Um, 845-825-1227. Wrestling this week, I'm like I said, I'm just DVR and Raw. I'm, I'm pretty much just only watching NXT and AEW right now. And I'm watching, first I'm watching NXT, and then I'm watching DVR, and then I'm going back and watching AEW. So, <clears throat> SmackDown was, was just so bad. Like, no one wants to see Hogan and Flair. Like, if they, if they actually come to blows at this thing, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to write Vince a letter, dude, because that's when you have to be like, listen, Vince, we love you. Thanks for the great amount of years of entertainment, but you have to step down and let Triple H and Stephanie and Shane take over because you are making this company look silly. And it's just, like I said, I love, Vince McMahon is, you know, he's the man and he always will be the man. But this is time and a place when you just have to sit down and realize, okay, I can't do this anymore. You know, he's not, he doesn't have the, he's, re he's regurgitating old shit just with different people. And you can see it. Look at look at fucking Kevin Owens. Who is he? He's the new Stone Cold. He's going to fuck coming out here and there and fucking stunning people. Like you can't do that with these guys. They're not those personalities. The attitude error was different. You can't go back. <clears throat> and that's what I feel that he's doing. And he's ruining WWE and uh, NXT. If as long as Triple H doesn't charge NXT, it's going to be awesome. So that's why I've been watching NXT more. Like I really haven't. I've been watching Raw, flipping back and forth, but I haven't been watching full episodes. Like I said, I just go back and just DVR fast food bullshit, you know. I just watch most of the matches. Like, all the stuff in between is garbage. It's regurgitated stories, you know. But at least NXT, like I said, I think they're smart. Making, making Finn Balor turn heel, smartest thing I think WWE can ever do. Because now you have Gargano versus freaking Finn Balor. That's going to be a match <clears throat> that I'm going to definitely will pay to see. Maybe you do a fail for it with him. Ch uh, Tommaso Ciampa and freaking Adam Cole in a Fatal 4 for the NXT Championship. I'm telling you right now, match of the year. Balor, Gargano, Ciampa, Cole. Fatal 4-way match at any pay-per-view, match of the year. I will call that now. People will shit their pants when they see this match because those guys are all great performers. Finn's a little bit older, but he still performs at a great, you know, he's 37 now, I think he is. 36. He, everyone thinks he looks younger, but he's in his late thirties. I thought I actually thought he was younger. I thought he was in his early thirties, late twenties, you know, late twenties, early thirties. But I said, "Oh shit!" He's, I think when, I, when he first came up with that, I think he's like thirty-five. So I think he's like thirty-seven now or thirty-eight. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm gonna look it up right now. Actually, <clears throat> we're gonna ask her, "How old is Finn Balor?" Finn Balor is thirty-eight years old. <laughs> Finn Balor. Who the fuck is Finn Balor? He's thirty-eight. Um, he just turned 38. So, um, I was like, see, like, some guys don't even look like, he doesn't look like he's 30. He looks like he's 28. He's still in great shape. He's got the young baby face, uh, Finn, Finn Balor. That's funny. <laughs> I just said Finn Balor. Anyways. Guys, I'm going to call in 845-825-1227. Unless, you know, I got no more emails, but, uh, AJ, St AJ Styles is 42. He doesn't, he looks good for his age. Strowman's 36. Rollins is 33. Roman's 34. Kevin Owens is 35. Nakamura is 39. I, there's a lot of... I don't even know. Let's see who else. Who's that? Bray Wyatt's 32. John Moxley, a.k.a. Dean Ambrose, 33. How old is Samoa Joe? Samoa Joe's 40. He just turned 40 this year. He don't look it. He's been around for a while, though. Too. All right, guys. I'll be back uh, next week with my week... Nine picks. Hopefully, I'll have a good week this week. Last week I had a good decent week, so I'm not wasn't too worried. But I'm still 55 and 40 is a pretty good record. So we'll see how I go from here. But guys, any questions, comments, emails to Jerry G Man two three seven six at Yahoo and at Gmail dot com. Follow me on Twitter at s underscore g funk and on Instagram at g funk underscore rants. And follow me here on Facebook, g funk Jerry G's rant and. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel, G Funk Rants. Folks, have a good week. Enjoy the football day. It's crappy out today, so everyone should probably be inside watching football. I know I will be. Until next week, folks, I gotta go. I'll see you when I see you.